When you're given a number like 7.8 times 10 to the fourth, this is written in scientific notation. But to write it in standard notation, that just means the normal way. To do that, it's really easy. You just want to look to the power, and we have positive 4. If the power is positive, you're going to move the decimal to the right. Therefore, we're going to move this guy right here four places to the right. Let's go ahead and copy over 7.8. Okay, then we're going to hop over 1, 2, 3, and 4. When you hop over 8, then there is no number to hop over here, here, or here. You're always going to put zeros in between. Okay, we move the decimal four places. Then it's not going to be here anymore. We're going to put it at the end of the number, so let's show that. And we're done. This is the same thing as the original number. It's just 78,000. You could go ahead and put a comma right here if you want. So 78,000, that's the population of Leander, Texas here. So that is the final answer. And again, this is written in standard notation. The original is written in scientific notation. Okay, let's look at another one. Once again, we're writing this number here in standard notation but this time we have a negative exponent. Because it's negative, we're gonna move this decimal here to the left this time. Okay, let's copy over 4.1 to start. You'll always copy over the first part. Then let's move this guy three places to the left. Let's do it. One, two, three, let's go ahead and show that. Now, we hopped over four, but then we didn't have a number here. That's a zero, that's a zero. And we'll put one more for good measure here. Okay, let's put our new decimal place right there. And that's it, 0 0.0041. And let's go ahead and rewrite it again. So that's how many inches the width of this hair was. Therefore, this number is the standard notation or the normal way, and that's the correct option here. So that's the key. When you have a positive number, you'll move the decimal to the right. A negative number, move the decimal to the left there. Okay, let's look at some other ones now. The distance to the moon is this many miles. This time we're gonna go from a standard notation to scientific notation. To write in scientific, you're always gonna put a decimal in between the first two numbers here. So between the two and the four. But pausing there, 2.4, and looking at the answers, a does that correctly, or the last one does that, but it can't be B or C. Those are not correct so far. Okay, then you're going to go from where the new decimal is to where the old one or the original was. Where is the decimal for the original? It's always at the end of the problem if it's a big number. So how many places do we go from the pink to the black one here? Let's count it out. We go one, two, three four, and five, and let's show that. We would have to move five places to the right. But you already know it's a positive five, so when we rewrite it, it's gonna be a positive exponent here, 10 to the power of five. So A, 2.4 times 10 to the five, same thing as 240,000 miles. But let's confirm with the calculator. Let's start off with 2.4, and by the way, this is the same calculator they'll give you for the GED tests. And then we're going to multiply times 10 to the power 5. So we're just typing in the answer we got. To do the power, you'll use this up arrow here, and then 5, and enter. Okay, we get 240,000, same thing we started with. So therefore, these two numbers are the exact same. In scientific or in standard notation there. Okay, let's do another one now. This time, the thickness of a US penny is 0 0.059 inches. Write this number in scientific notation. We're still gonna put the decimal between the first two numbers, but if you have a bunch of zeros, you always ignore those first. So it's gonna be between the five and the nine. We'll put our decimal right there. Okay, we know it's 5.9, could be the first option, could be the last option. Then let's count how do we go from the new decimal to the old one. Let's go ahead and show that. 
we hop over one, two places to get there. But notice we went to the left two, so let's put that in. And because we have left two, we know the power is going to be negative two. So D, this is the correct scientific notation. Once again, let's go ahead and type this. Let's verify that it's the same thing here. So let's go ahead and clear. We've got 5.9 times 10 to the power. To type a power of negative 2, you're always going to use the white negative button. So this one down below. This button is for subtract, but you'll never put that as a power. Okay, so negative 2. And enter. And 0.059 is what we started with here. So both of these numbers are identical. Okay, so hopefully you're feeling pretty good with these ones so far. Now all of these could be no calculator problems, but let's look at some where you can use the calculator. A giraffe weighs this many pounds, while an elephant weighs this many pounds. How much heavier is an elephant than a giraffe? To find out how much heavier one thing is than another, you could always make a fraction. And you'll put the heavier thing up top. Now looking at these two numbers, a quick way to find which is bigger is to look to the power. 10 to the 3 or 10 to the 4. 10 to the 4 is automatically going to be bigger if the power is bigger. So 1.3 times 10 to the 4, that's the elephant's weight, and we're going to put that up top. But we're going to divide it by the lighter weight, which is the giraffe. So 3.6 times 10 to the 3, that's going to go underneath, and we'll divide by that. Okay, let's go ahead and type this in. We're going to start with this n over d button, a fraction. It's an easy way to divide two things. Okay, the heavier thing, 1.3 times 10 to the power of 4. We'll put the elephant's weight up top. Then we'll hit the down arrow and divide by the giraffe's weight. 3.6 times 10 to the power of 3. And enter. 3.611. Closest answer is B. So let's highlight that. Therefore, the elephant, the heavier thing, is 3.6 times heavier than the giraffe or the lighter thing there. Okay, so we could divide two things with scientific notation. Let's see what else we might do. For this one, Shaq has 2.8 times 10 to the fourth points all time. Kobe has 3.3 times 10 to the fourth points all time. What is their difference in points? Difference in math always means to subtract. But we're going to start with the bigger amount minus the smaller amount. But looking at the powers, they both have to the power 4. So let's look to the numbers in front. 2.8, 3.3. Because this is bigger, then Kobe had more points all time. So we'll start with his amount, the bigger amount, and subtract the number of Shaq's points to get their difference here. Let's go ahead and subtract these two. We'll start with Kobe's points, 3.3 times 10 to the power 4. But this is important because we need to get out of the exponent to do the subtraction sign. We don't want to put it up top here. That'll mess it up. So use the right arrow and then put the subtract there. OK, minus Shaq's points, 2.8 also times 10 to the power of 4. And boom. So 5,000, that's the difference between their points. But we might be thinking, well, wait a minute, which of these is the same as 5,000? Well, the calculator is great because you could hit mode and then go down to normal mode. That's what we're in standard-wise. But we want to switch it to scientific. So hit enter. OK, then hit clear. And then we're going to scroll up, grab the same answer we got, and hit enter, and enter one more time. It just converted it. This is the normal way. This is the scientific way. So this is our final answer. 5 times 10 to the third. It's the same thing as the first one. 5.0 times 10 to the third. So that is the difference between their points there. And we already know it's the same thing as 5,000. So therefore, Kobe scored 5,000 more points than Shaq in their careers here. But he also shot a heck of a lot more too, so, you know, there's always that. Okay, let's look at one last problem.
For this one, a solar panel contains thin layers of silicon, and they're 1.1 times 10 to the negative 3 millimeters thick. Well, that's hard to visualize, but we'll come back to that. There are 6.2 times 10 to the 4 silicon layers. We want to know what is the total thickness in millimeters of all the layers stacked together. If it's hard to visualize what is the total thickness here, let's start off by drawing a solar panel. We'll just make a rectangle. Now we're given this first number, and that's how many millimeters thick one layer of silicon is. Let's just go ahead and draw a purple line to represent that. Once again, this line represents how thick one layer of silicon is. But we can make up a number because this is hard to visualize. Let's pretend that this thing here is two inches thick. Just make it a nice easy number to deal with. Okay, next, there are this many layers of silicon. Let's highlight that. Well, that'll fill in all the way because this is one layer, but then there's this many layers total. Once again, we're going to make up a different number just for simplicity. Let's pretend that there's a hundred layers of silicon here. To find the total thickness, what are we going to do with these two numbers? Well, we're going to multiply, because if this is the thickness of one thing, and we have a hundred of them, we're going to multiply those to get the total thickness. So let's go ahead and show that. So finally, we're going to multiply the purple number times the pink number, same thing as doing this operation to get the total thickness. So it's definitely a little tricky, but once you draw the picture, it can help figure out what to do with the two values here. Okay, once again, let's clear. Let's actually switch the mode back to normal. Let's go down and enter. Then second and quit. Okay, so let's start off with our thickness for one layer of silicon. That's 1.1 times 10 to the power, negative three. But you know what to do, we gotta get out of there, hit the right arrow. Then we're gonna multiply by how many layers we have. So times that pink number here. Okay, 6.2 times 10 to the power four. And drum roll, we get 68.2. That is the total thickness in millimeters for the solar panel here. And this is one where we're going to type in the number, so we'll go ahead and just type in 68.2 in the box right there. Check out my website to practice problems just like these ones. And here's a video with no calculator problems, just like the first four we did. Let me know what questions you have, what else you want me to cover. Good luck, you got these, we'll see you in the next video. Toodles!